I'm using this as a way to introduce you to totalitarianism in architecture. My hope is that by um, having an introduction uh, to the images that the group will work a little bit more smoothly. A reminder that totalitarianism means that the government has total control of your daily life, that it controls the economy, the arts, it controls where you live, what you do, uh, um, and that was common to Italy and Germany, but it also uh, to fascist Spain, as well as to the Soviet Union under Stalin. We're going to begin with Italy because that was the first to convert to one of those uh, authoritarian forms of government. Mussolini seized power in 1922 in Italy in the wake of what was considered to be a very bad deal for Italy in World War I. He was a master of propaganda, uh, understanding very early on how to uh, use photography as a way to elevate his power, making sure uh, with the help of good photographers uh, that his image was always a, uh, in a different color and in a focal point as contrasted with those that were photographed in his, uh, in his environs. Fascism is a totalitarian system. Uh, it is based on, uh, as I said, the government control, although one of its uh, strengths was really in the organization of the economy into corporations where they had all ranks of people working side by side in order to improve the economy. One of the things that was different about uh, fascism than what we see will see in Germany is that there was not the degree of anti-Semitism and that the fascist party, in fact, reconciled with the Catholic Church. In 1926, Tarani and a couple of his colleagues coming out of M Milan Polytechnic founded a group known as Group 7 or Group 07. Um, and these architects were about moving Italy away from its traditionalism and revival styles. So what was dominant in Italy at the time was uh, revivals of classical, revivals of Baroque, the things that had made Italy great. What they advocated instead was rationalism in architecture. They embraced the machine coming off of the legacy of the futurists. And so they were really pushing the envelope towards modernism. The Casio del Fascio was built as the headquarters or the local headquarters uh, for uh, the fascist party. And interestingly enough, it's built by one of the Group 07, one of the uh, proclaimed modernists. Uh, please note that this is the same individual who is the um, author of the treatise that you are reading, so I expect you to overlap. The A&D article has a lot of good images as well as some uh, good discussion of the rationalist design principles. But one of the things I also want you to think about is how this building meets the needs of a totalitarian regime in terms of its propaganda as well as in terms of its meeting spaces. As a comparative building, I've also included down in the right-hand corner Le Corbusier's Pavilion Suisse, and uh, a building that was very much admired by Group 07. Although, although the Group 07 strongly admired L'Esprit Nouveau um, and Le Corbusier's articles therein, uh, there was a division between two of the leaders, Turani on the one hand and Giuseppe Pagnano on the other hand. And what happens is that as a, uh, Mussolini becomes convinced of the merits of rationalism, um, there, um, that isn't enough and there's this divide so that when the, um, uh, the extra area of architecture on the outskirts of Rome, which is called the EUR now, um, which was near the exposition um, grounds, that what happened was that the rationalists um, and Tarani's camp lost out, and Pagnano's group, who um, really wanted a stripped classicism, that's who took over. 
you can see that kind of stripped classicism, the revival of historicism in both um, on, on the left hand side, that EUR building, and on the right hand, um, the uh, image from Sabaudia, which was a um, beach installation designed for the military. Here we see uh, Hitler and Mussolini together. Hitler was elected chancellor in 1933, seized total power by 1934. Unlike Mussolini, we see almost no evidence of any play with modernism. Nazism stands for National Socialism. It is an extremely nationalistic program. It is like uh, uh, fascism in that you have this uh, totalitarian, militaristic government, but the idea is a little bit different because the Führer, the leader, believed that he represents the collective will of the people. Um, and there's no such pretense in, Ital in Italy. It also was extremely anti-Semitic. And as I pointed out, that was not true in Germany or in Italy, nor did you have that systematic uh, destruction of many groups of people. They shared, however, again, their totalitarian outlook and their extreme militarism. Hitler uh, thought himself an artist and actually started in art school in Vienna. And his closest friends were, in fact, architects Speer and Troost. Um, he and Speer actually came up for a joint plan for rebuilding the city of Berlin in the 1930s along a strong central axis, but using some of those functional zoning ideas that Le Corbusier had put forward. Speer's design for the chancellery, and notice 1936 to 9 is before World War II has actually started, is opulent but re uh, refined. It has a lot of the symbols of power. One of the things I'm going to ask you to do is to compare designs um, by Speer to Tarani. And here you're seeing the interiors of the chancellery to the interior of Casa del Fascio. Design was put to a kind of nefarious purpose at the viewing fields of the Zeppelin field, where light, pageantry, scale, repetition all serve the interests of the Nazi program. Another type of design funded by the Nazi party was uh, buildings along uh, travel roads, along the Autobahn, rest houses and youth hostels that reflected traditional German values, but also uh, served as uh, troops and young people moved to viewing sites like Zeppelin Field where they could actually see or actually stay in residences that reflected German values. Use Kleiner to help you find what degenerate art is and the examples like uh, Nolde here. I also want you to know what the contemporary events were to which Picasso refers and how he uses the, um, the coloration of popular imagery, uh, coloration and content of popular imagery and news sources in this painting. In this final postcard from the Exposition Internationale in Paris of 1937, we see on the left-hand side the Nazi uh, building in its tall monumentality with its uh, eagle on the top. On the right-hand side, we see Melkina's statue to the workers and the Soviet Union and their uh, totalitarian architecture facing off. The question I'm going to ask you is, how does this axial view of the International Exposition of Art and Technology in Modern Life at Paris summarize the conflicts between the Soviets uh, and the Nazis?